Welcome back. In the last video, I walked you through WordPress caching. And this time, we're going to talk about how to configure WordPress cron, outgoing email, and automated backups. WordPress has built in support for scheduled tasks, which allow certain processes to be performed in the background at designated times. This is known as crons. Out of the box, WordPress performs the following scheduled tasks. Automatic updates, which are pushed out by the WordPress core team to fix security vulnerabilities. Checks to make sure that WordPress is running the latest stable release. Checks for plugin updates. Checks for theme updates. Publishing posts that are scheduled for future release. However, the cron system used by WordPress isn't the most efficient or accurate of implementations. Scheduled tasks in WordPress are triggered by the lifecycle of a page request. Therefore, if your site doesn't receive any visits for a set period of time, no cron events will be triggered during this time. This becomes more of an issue for sites that use page caching, such as the Nginx Fast CGI cache we introduced in the previous video. With page caching enabled, WordPress is no longer processing each page request if the page cache is hit. This means that the cron will not fire until the page cache expires. If you've configured the cache to expire after 60 minutes, this may not be an issue. However, if you are caching for longer periods of time, this could become problematic. Using page requests to execute the cron is also problematic even if you're not using caching, but you just don't get a lot of traffic to your website. Conversely, checking if the cron needs to be executed on every page request is hard on the server, and several simultaneous requests could cause the cron to execute multiple times. To overcome these issues, crons should be configured using the operating system daemon, the background process, available on Linux and all Unix-based systems. Because cron runs as a daemon, it will run based on the server's system time and no longer require a user to visit the site. I'll show you how to use the operating system to configure crons in this video, but first we want to disable WordPress from automatically handling cron. Let's SSH into our server, navigate to your website's public directory. Now let's open up the wp-config file in the nano editor. sudo nano wp-config.php. Let's add a line to our config file. Once again, this is going to be in the written version of the guide. You can just copy and paste this. Define, disable wp cron true. Control X to save, and we're back at the command line. To control crons, or remember those are just scheduled tasks on a server, we add them to a text file called crontab. Each line within the file represents a different scheduled task or cron event. Now if you have multiple sites on your server, you're going to need one entry per site. You can open up crontab by typing crontab-e. Because I haven't opened up crontab yet on this server, it's asking me to choose an editor. We want to choose nano, it's the easiest editor to work with, it's also what we've been using throughout the rest of this series. We won't go into great detail on the cron tab syntax, but what we add to this file will fire the WordPress cron every five minutes. I'm going to head over to the written version of this guide, and here is the command that we want to copy. Once again, I'm going to open it in my text editor so that I can update the path. I'm going to update the username as well as the domain name. I'll copy it again, head back over to the nano editor, and at the bottom of the file, I'll paste in that command. Let's save and exit our cron tab. Now, if we just examine that command we pasted in just a little bit, you'll see that we're actually using wpcli to trigger the cron. Some articles suggest using wget or curl for triggering cron, but using wpcli is recommended. Both wget and curl make requests through nginx and are subject to the same timeout limits as web requests. However, you may want your cron jobs to run for longer periods of time. For example, if a plugin is uploading hundreds or thousands of media objects to Amazon S3 as a background process, there's no timeout limit when running WordPress cron via WPCLI. It will execute until complete. The dev slash null part at the end of the command here ensures that no emails are sent to the Unix user account initiating the cron job. All right, assuming you've saved and exited the nano editor, cron is now configured using the Unix system cron tool. I'll demonstrate how to check that it's running correctly a little bit later on. Next, let's talk about email. Email servers are notoriously difficult to set up. Not only do you need to ensure that emails successfully hit the recipient's inbox, but you also have to consider how you'll handle spam or viruses that are attached to emails that get sent. Installing the required software to run your own mail server can also eat up a lot of valuable system resources and potentially open up your server to more security vulnerabilities. There's a link to a DigitalOcean article in the written version of this guide, which goes into much more detail about why you may not want to host your own mail server. For your personal or work mail, I don't recommend that you configure your server to handle email. Instead, use a best of breed service provider like G Suite. However, WordPress still needs to send outgoing emails, things like administration notifications, new user signups, password requests, or auto update notifications. 
and that's just the WordPress core. When you add plugins to the mix, the volume and importance of the emails being sent from your site balloon. Think about WooCommerce order receipts. Although it's quite popular to configure WordPress to use SMTP for outgoing email, we do not recommend it. Instead, you should use a WordPress plugin that connects directly to an email sending service via an API. Preferably a plugin that queries emails to be sent later when the API is unreachable instead of never sending them. WP Offload SES and WP Offload SES Lite are such plugins. In addition to simplifying the setup process, WP Offload SES sends emails via Amazon SES, so you can be sure of the high deliverability and low costs. I'll go ahead and set up WP Offload SES Lite on Plugins, Add New. I'll search for WP Offload SES. Here's the Lite version, which is available for free in the WordPress repository. The Pro version adds features like open and click tracking, open and click reporting, auto retry of failed emails, and even manual retry of failed emails. For now, I'm going to activate the Lite version. With the plugin installed and activated, I'll go over to Settings, Offload SES Lite, and there's a very handy wizard to help me get started. First, I'm going to need to create a user over on AWS. I'll give the user a name, and I'm going to choose Programmatic Access. Hit Next. Next, I'm going to attach an existing policy directly. I'll type in SES, and I want full access, the top one. We'll press Next, Next again, Create User, and here we have our access keys. Back over in the WordPress plugin, now we need to enter our access keys. I'll press Next. We recommend defining your access keys in WP Config, and we even have a little template here that we can copy and paste. However, if you don't want to go to this trouble, you can enter them directly into the plugin. But let's not do that here. I'm going to copy this, open up the text editor, and paste in the command and I'm just going to paste in my keys right here. Back over in AWS, I'll copy the access key, paste it into my command. Then I'll grab the secret access key as well and paste that into the command. We'll copy this entire thing, head back over to the command line, and let's open up WP Config. I'll paste in the access keys, Control X to exit, save, and back over to WordPress. Next, we need to select the region that we want to send from. It's best that you choose the region closest to where your server is running. For me, I'm going to leave it set in North Virginia. I'll press next to move out of sandbox mode. As it says in the setup wizard, by default, all new Amazon SES accounts are placed into sandbox mode, which means they're not allowed to send emails to anyone outside of your domain. You need to ask Amazon to lift these restrictions. Simply log into the Amazon console and open up an SES sending limit increase case. You can follow this little guide right here to tell you exactly what to say to get out of sandbox mode. This does take some time, typically one business day. All right, let's go ahead and verify sender. Next, we need to verify the email sender. You have two options here. You can verify the domain or verify the email address. I recommend going with verifying the domain. This allows me to send an email from any address attached to the same domain. I'll go ahead and just choose the daveswift.com domain. I'll press next to complete the verification. On the next screen, I'm given a text record that I need to add to my DNS provider. I'll do that now. I'll add a new record text record, enter in the host. Make sure you don't add your domain name at the end. You simply want to go up to the SES part for most DNS providers. Then let's grab the value and I'll paste that over here. Save our record and we should be good to go. As it says here in the wizard, it can take some time for DNS to propagate and for Amazon to verify the domain. We're going to continue through the configuration process here, but if you do run into any errors, you might want to consider giving it a moment so that DNS can propagate throughout the world. On this screen, we're going to configure the email address that our website is sending emails from. I'll go ahead and enter in an email address here. On the next field where it says WordPress notification name, this is going to be the from name in your emails. I'll enter Pluto notification bot. The return path is an email address where bounces and email complaints are supposed to be sent. I'll enter in the same email address here. And under delete logs, we can set how long we want to keep logs for, as little as seven days and as many as two years. I'll leave it as the default 90, hit save and complete the setup. All right, great, we are all set up. My WordPress website should be able to send out emails now through Amazon SES. In order to test that both cron and outgoing emails are working correctly, we have a small plugin that will send an email to the admin user every five minutes. This isn't something that you'll want to keep enabled indefinitely, so once you have established that everything is working correctly, remember to disable the plugin. Here's how we set up the plugin. Back over in the command line, create a new file called cron-test.php within the plugins directory of your WordPress website. Let's navigate to the plugins directory Now let's create the new file, sudo nano cron-test.php. Next, let's head over to the written version of this guide, and here is the cron test plugin that we are going to be creating. We'll copy this and paste it into our nano editor. Save and exit. Back over in WordPress, we'll go to plugins, and here is our plugin cron and email test. 
I'll activate it. Once you've activated the plugin, you should receive an email shortly after. If not, check out your cron tab configuration and WP offload SES settings. Next, let's talk about backups. Performing backups on a regular basis is essential. It's inevitable that at some point in the future, you're going to need to restore data, whether that is due to user error, corruption, or even a security breach. You never know what could go wrong, so having a recent backup on hand can really make your life easier as a systems administrator. There are generally two types of backups that I like to perform. The first is a full system backup, and the second is a backup of each individual site hosted on a server. Full system backups are best performed by your VPS provider, but they're not usually enabled by default. Both DigitalOcean and Linode offer this service for a nominal fee. This sort of backup is generally only used when a rare catastrophic event occurs where all of the data on your server was lost. You won't want to restore the entire system if only a single site needs restoring, hence the reason for single site backups. Single site backups only back up the items required to restore a single site, and in terms of WordPress, this usually consists of the database and the uploads directory. If you're using a plugin such as WP Offload Media, you can skip the need to back up the uploads directory as the files are automatically sent to your configured storage provider when you added them to the media library. For many sites that aren't updated often, you might find that weekly backups are just fine. But there are situations where you'd want to perform backups more frequently. For example, you might want to perform backups on an e-commerce site every few hours, depending on how often new orders are received. Let's head over to the command line and begin setting up single site backups. First, let's head to the site's root directory. Next, let's add a new directory for the backups, mkdir backups. If I type ls, I can see that I now have four directories. I have the backup, the cache, the logs, and the public folder. Next, let's create a new file called backup.sh. Let's type nano backup.sh. Let's head over to the written version of the guide, and we want to copy and paste this into the nano editor, but of course we have to first update some directories. I'll change my username, my domain name, then copy and paste it into the nano editor. We'll press Control X followed by Y to save. Then we just need to set the file permission so our newly created file has execute permissions. chmod u plus x space backup.sh. The last step is to schedule the backup script to run at a designated time. How are we going to do this? Of course, with a cron. Let's open up cron tab. We'll go to the end of the file, head over to the written version of the guide, and here's our cron command. I'll copy and paste this into our text editor where I can update the path. Back over to the nano editor, paste it in. This will run backups every Monday morning at 5 a.m. server time. Just remember that you'll need to add this script and cron tab for each individual site that you want to back up. Of course, this is a local backup. I highly recommend also moving these files to a remote server for safekeeping. Check out Brad's post on how to set up backup files to Amazon S3 and automatically remove old backups, linked in the written version of this guide. All right, that concludes this video. In the next video, we'll improve the security of our server with tweaks to the Nginx configuration.